As we last left off, the party had been taking the time to get to know each other. The Kraken called them all together for a meeting to explain his rash and unannounced attack on the Illuminator, Anthony Maxson's flagship. He explained to the party that this isn't how things are done. But, with the loss of his grotto some seven months ago, a channel of islands that he and his crew call home, they are beginning to run low on supplies. Without the recapture of their home from the pirate hunters and the commander, Alison Dubois, the crew and the party will perish at sea. So, they agreed to become the ship's boarding party until the capture of the grotto was complete. With haste, the Wayward Sun's crew and party set off on a two-day journey to the grotto. Getting as close as they could, they then set off on rowboats with the Kraken, a few other members of the crew, including Mori, Billy, and Thorin. Moving to a small island on the edge of the grotto with a shipwrecked vessel on its beach, despite the hiccups, they managed to gather some useful information on the pirate hunter's defenses. Seeing their patrol patterns along the stone dock, and how many are guarding the tavern. Unfortunately, they also discovered the long-rotted body of the former navigator of the Wayward Sun, hanging on the coiled serpent figurehead on the front of the bar. Sneaking around the back of the grotto's islands, making their move on the stone dock and tavern from the rear, Mint seeing towards the largest island of the grotto, a series of ships of varying sizes, anchored with small rowboats, landed on the beach. Keeping that information in the back of their minds, the party began their attack with brutal speed. The guards weren't ready for what hit them. Asta flying over to the roof of the tavern holding Mint and Flint, landing as quietly as they can. A small amount of noise was made. A shot still came through the roof from one of the hunters within the tavern, hitting Mint in the left side. Most of the crew assembled at the door. Mint and Flint take to the balcony, cutting a hole in the tarp that covers it and dropping down. Down below, a captured pirate hunter standing in front of the party, being held by Kadan, is forced to knock upon the tavern door. As all this goes on, Malachi searches some of the perished pirate hunters on the dock, finding a few wanted posters. Kadan, the bear, for 500 silver pieces. Israel Cobb, the butcher of Concordia, for 3,500 platinum coin, and the Kraken, the Devil of the Eleven Seas, for 9,500 platinum coin. Something Malachi noticed, outside of how vicious they made Kadan appear, is that the Krakens looked like a monster, more than a man, long horns and a braided beard, and blackened eyes. As the door to the tavern opens, a large Goliath pirate hunter enforcer opens the door laughing and eager for a fight. Without hesitation, the Enforcer cut down the captured pirate hunter being held by Kadan, stabbing clean through him and into Kadan. The party prepares for a brawl, Udo readying herself and Malachi wrapping his sword around his forearm and pulling it like a ripcord as the purple blood gushes and begins to freeze around his blade. Upstairs, Mint tries to enter the tavern's second floor, trying a nearby door. Though the door was unlocked, the second floor wasn't unoccupied, as she gained the attention of the very pirate hunters that shot at her, two pirate hunter riflemen. She runs out of the room, ducking back around the corner to safety. Flint goes to peek the room to see what shocked Mint, a near fatal mistake. The riflemen were ready for whoever came back through that door, and fired as his horns reared the corner of the doorframe, going through the wall and hitting Flint directly in the collarbone. It was a critical hit. As Flint shouts in pain, and Mint tries her best to heal his wounds while tending to her own, Magnus hears the commotion from the second floor as the rest of the group charged into the tavern, dropping all that got in their way. Magnus leaped into action, literally, using his natural abilities, springing from the walkway to a barrel and up to the balcony to aid his young new companions. As Uno, Mal, and Kadan crowd the door, Asta makes his own entrance, busting through the wall of the tavern. The party push their way into the tavern more and more. With every step gained, the pirate hunters would execute hostages that were being kept in the fighting ring of the bar. Asta quickly sprung into action, attacking the two firing at the hostages beating one guard with another, incapacitating them both, and threatening them that he would come back if they even think about reaching for their weapons. 
Back upstairs, Mint takes to the doorway, turning into the form of a celestial-bodied guardian, dominating the mind of one of the hunters and forcing him downstairs to stop the Goliath guarding the door. Kadan quickly dispatches the pirate hunter enforcer. As the mind-controlled rifleman rushes downstairs to stop his comrade, knocking the rifleman off of his feet. As the rifleman is knocked over, the spell fades, and looking towards the rage-filled sight of Kadan, the hunter reaches for his flintlock and shoots directly at Kadan, missing. Kadan not taking kindly to this, he grabbed and smashed him through a nearby table, breaking the rifleman's neck. Magnus continued his daring acrobatics, leaping off a table on the balcony and heading into the second floor proper, where Mint was attempting to dispatch the three riflemen and one veteran that was also up there with them. Mint, Magnus, and Flint hear a voice yell from one of the rooms at the end of the hall. Dimitri! Hey you! Get me the fuck out of here! As the clash ensues upstairs, Kadan heads up to join the fray, but something dark is brewing within him. Uno fighting a guard with such vicious intent it unintendedly intimidates him into submission as he drops his weapons and calls for a parlay. Malachi notices a door to the back of the tavern, opening it to find two pirate hunters and a Yuan-Ti captain drinking together at a table. Stunned at the sight of him in the doorway, Malachi lunges, dropping on all fours and animalistically pinning the captain to the ground as he does, smashing the table in the process. The two pirate hunters drunkenly pretend to be pirates, to nobody's belief. Uno enters the back room. Seeing the commotion, she decides to step away and help the hostages. The captain utters to Malachi that he's the Kraken's best friend. Albeit in a wildly unconvincing and drunken state, fate and the dice cause Malachi to be none the wiser. As Mint fires shots in her starry form state, Magnus leaps from wall to wall while being shot at by the veteran sergeant pirate hunter. Kadan feels the echoes of his rage and trauma seeping into his mind, returning to his time in the arena, hearing the chanting of the crowd. Bear, 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 bear. Trying to withhold his rage, taking cover by an open door to avoid the brunt of the volley of fire from the pirate hunters, Kadan hears a familiar voice taunting him from the back of the I hall. I smell you, bear. <laughs> Come on out. Mop this mess up causing him to sink into his rage even more. His muscles were swelling, and his appearance was slowly beginning to change. Asta joins the others upstairs, so he can repay his debt to the Kraken for his freedom. Rushing and tossing his anchor at one of the nearby riflemen, incapacitating him brutally. As Kadan, Magnus, Mint, and Asta overwhelm the three hunters at the end of the hall, the veteran takes an orb from his belt, a blue crystal sphere with a silver metal ring keeping it together. He twists it and spikes it into the ground to cause a small explosion of electrical arcane energy. However, he didn't charge the item properly, doing only minor damage to Kadan and Magnus, and unfortunately killing himself in the process. Magnus turns to face Kadan seeing the rage in his eyes. Magnus' concern grows, but soon after, the mirage of the arena that Kadan was seeing begins to fade, the bear receding into the cave that is Kadan's mind. Kadan ignoring what just transpired, he moves to the door where yelling and taunts were coming from. Locked, he kicks the door open. Inside a terribly gory scene, multiple dead pirate hunters and a man standing there. Cobb himself, holding the head he tore from one of the bodies, smiling with sadistic pride as he lights his cigar and continues the taunting. Cobb is a six foot five muscular human with silvery blue eyes and sharpened teeth. Unlike his wanted poster, his blonde hair is cut and cleaned, slicked back. He also has a mustache and a slight beard. Despite his cleaned up appearance in comparison to what the wanted poster shown, the man was still just as vile. Wearing leather armor greaves and a shine silver pauldron of a wolf just like Sinclair, though his is rusted. A number of scars litter his body and a winding tattoo of a dragon on his left arm goes from wrist to shoulder. Cobb mocks the party that Kadan arrived with, calling them children, bizarre, or in Asta's case, poor. When Asta informs him that the rags that he wears are all he has, 
telling him of where he came from just before this daring endeavor. He pulls Asta under his wing, placing an arm on his shoulder, and happily takes him to his room within the tavern, helping him with new clothes to better suit his new pirate lifestyle. As the two disappear into Cobb's room, Kadan angrily punches a wall as Flint just stands in awe of the fact that he just was in the same room as the legendary Butcher of Concordia. Uno begins to make her rounds, checking on the party as she heads upstairs. Asta emerges wearing a nice cobalt blue long coat with a high collar and torn sleeves, leather fingerless gloves, and a laced and strapped leather boots. As Cobb makes his way downstairs, passing Uno, he stops, eyeing her up and down, and giving Kadan his approval of this one. Downstairs, Malachi is attempting to get a drink from the bartender the pirate hunters brought with him, a rather portly man, but is met with opposition as he refuses to serve such filth like a pirate. A shot rings out from underneath the bar, and the man drops, hopping up on the stool and in better view of Malachi and others on the opposite side of the bar, is a leather-clad, heel-wearing, tan-skinned halfling with a slicked-back black pompadour and goatee. He introduced himself as Cicero, the grotto's personal bartender. As he makes Malachi a stiff drink, a massive, hulking visage of a shark man in a chef's hat, wearing a tunic and a bloodied apron come out of the back. He drops a bowl of soup at the bar in front of Malachi, saying, Soup. This is Chef, the ship cook. Though his intelligence fails him, he does have the aid of his best friend, a small, currently unnamed puppet, a little patchwork doll that he can speak quite poetically through. Malachi, while enjoying his food and drink, find more posters. Billy the Brute for 750 silver pieces, Sinclair, the Eye of the Sea, for 10 platinum coin, Thorin Norik, the Driftwood Dagger, for 10 platinum coin, and one final poster, a poster that stood out amongst the others, Flint Lockhart, wanted for murder, 75 silver pieces. Malachi brings the poster to Flint. So, words reached out here too, huh? Got to like this pretty good. You know this isn't true, right? I don't know anything to be true, but you don't seem like the sudden murder type. That's what yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely not me. You will have surprises. It was a matter of wrong place at the wrong time. I, I didn't do anything. I hope you can believe me. Malachi looks down at Flynn. Like these piercing eyes. Face just blank. Looks to his one poster and rips it and throws it into the sea. Thank you. Don't thank me yet. You're still a wanted man, but you're with pirates now. Yeah. You're still gonna be a wanted man regardless. Yeah. Kinda gets a little, uh... A smirk on his face, and he's... I... Well... Yeah, I guess... I guess I'm... If I'm already wanted, I guess it's been settled. Part of the crew. Part of the crew. Might as well make a bigger name for yourself. <laughs> I, like, slap him on the back. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Cobb is making his way out of the tavern as Kadan goes onto the balcony, looking out at the sea and trying to calm his hatred and rage. Do not fall into the bear again. Magnus joins him. Kadan. Yes. How was that fight for you? What do you mean? Well, after that guy set off that electric bomb, you looked at me with, uh... Then, quite an intent, I wasn't quite sure I would see him on our first battle. <clears throat> it is like Kraken said, I lose myself in 
heat of battle. It has been plague on it has been a plague on my life since I was young. I don't mean to pry. I don't want to know everything you maybe saw, but what did you see when you looked at me? I had the memory of the arena days. Saw my rival, as they would put it. The one who never I never beat. And you saw me as that? Yes. Oh. I saw... Hallway disappeared the way. All I saw was blood and sand. And so... You didn't attack me... Through sheer, sheer luck, essentially? Or how did you pull yourself out of it? Willpower. Sheer will. Sometimes I'm lucky like that. I suppose... Well, no, never mind. So... Your rival... You never vanquished him and he never... Vanquished you, but did you ever come to blows? We fought many times. He... He was... Bigger than I had natural weapons on his body that he would use to fight. He natural was... weapons, like he had like tusks or something. Or... He had damn um, things that come out of head. Oh, the horns. Shapes of yeah, like that. The horns. The horns. Yes. He would. Uh, he loved to try to stab me with them. But, uh, we fought many times. They never... The arena never let us kill one another. Killing was accidental. The two talk as they look upon the Kraken and the Cobb reuniting in a Beastmaster's shake and into a hug. Cobb is not only the first mate of the Wayward Son, but he's also the Kraken's best friend of nearly two decades. The Kraken summons the party to the front of the tavern, asking about Alice and Dubois, and if their party were successful in killing her. However, the party didn't even encounter a trace of her being here. The Kraken assumes if she is still at the grotto, that she must be in the caves, where goods, spices, and tradable items are all stored within the island, on the side of the grotto to where the party spotted those anchored ships. The Kraken orders the party to take the caves and kill Alicent before sunrise. They can rest all they need, but they do have a timeline to complete this job. Cobb was brought into a rage at these orders. These were orders for a boarding party, something that was his job to command. A former head of the boarding party, with former hand-picked individuals that serve underneath him, not this group of misfits and whelps in his eyes. Furious about the loss of his former task, he turns to the party. But the Kraken stops him, putting a hand on his shoulder. Easy, Mongrel. You can have command of the boarding party. No need to bark like this. Not now. The Kraken tells the party that they are no longer a boarding party. That they're now his personal vanguard. An offensive force meant to take charge and deal with the threats before they become threats and handle tasks for the betterment of the crew. The boarding party are the defense, guard dogs used when needed. The vanguard are the attack dogs striking when you least expect it. The Kraken turns to head into the tavern as Cobb walks away, angered, but Kadan stops him. Cobb. Maybe next time don't get captured, then maybe you get to keep what you have. This enrages Cobb even more as he pushes past him, walking down the walkway and past Billy and Maury. Billy also mocks him after seeing Kadan take what he saw was a friendly jab between crewmates. This sends Cobb over the edge. 
He laughs, and then grabs Billy by the collar of his jacket, pulling him down to his level, and shoving his fingers into his right eye, pulling it out, and shoving him down to the ground. As the party look on in horror, Cobb licks his fingers clean of the blood, and pockets the eyeball. Malachi disturbed, yet intrigued by this, questions if Cobb is really even just a man, and casts Detect Fey, Fiend, or Undead. He looks around a shadowed version of the world, silhouettes of the party he can vaguely make out, but one faint glow is appearing within the tavern, the glow of something undead, or close to. As he drops the spell, standing where the white glow was, leaning against the bar is the Kraken, who turns to look at him, giving him a smile and a nod, as he knocks back his drink and continues his conversation with Cicero.